Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap is a follow on from last week, doing that 40 tooth gear. I make another one. This time I use a fibre material, tough knoll. The gear works out much better. I show a little bit of doing that. I also do a welding repair on a cast iron road sign. I get some decent arc shots. The setup I've had for doing arc shots hasn't been that good. I've been playing with it and I've got some decent shots now, so I'll probably put quite a bit more welding related shots into my videos. Sadly, last week I had to mention uh, my friend Mick, his dog Stig, had to be put to sleep after a, a, an accident. Uh, I've been in touch with Mick a few times since, and he'd just like to say thanks very much for all the, the well wishes and words of condolences he's had. Uh, he's been truly moved by it, as have I actually. Anyway, thanks very much. The first thing I'm going to do is the draw for the little hand piece. I've had quite a few names come in, obviously people are wanting that. It's a, they are quite a useful little tool, I've got two or three and I do use them quite a bit. So we'll see if we get a name out of the bucket. We'll go down to the bottom somewhere. There's one. Right, what we've got. The name I've got is Brian Comey. Right, Brian, all you've got to do is send me an email with your address and I'll get that in the post straight away next week. I'm going to do another giveaway. It's for something my friend Bob gave us. It's a rod for measuring bore sizes, of a compart of our bore sizes. I'll get a close-up shot and show you how it works. It's quite a nice little item. This is the little bore gauge I got off Bob. It's got a knurled lock wheel on that end and the shaft actually comes apart in a different lens so by a combination of all these different pieces you can in fact measure basically any size bore oh it's close again a different lens it's got little ball ends on there so you'll put that in a ball make it a good fit and then put either your vernier or your micrometer on the outside of there certainly well worth having of course you can use the uh, imperial or metric, it doesn't matter, it'll work either way. It is a nice little, nice little bit of kit. And I have got internal micrometers so I would never ever use this, so I might as well be giving away to somebody that can use it. As usual, if you want a chance to win that, all you've got to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there. All I need is your name, your full name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post it away to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. Well, I'll not post your name away, I'll post it away whenever you win, which next week is going to be that. I'm going to make another like, gear. Yeah, this time I'm going to use a piece of toughener. Toughener is basically like a cloth material bound up in glue now I know for a fact when you machine it it gives off nasty not fumes but the dust not very good for you so I'm going to run a vacuum cleaner and try and suck most of the the dust away it needs 3 mil taken off it to make it down to the, the, the 90 mil for the thickness so I'm going to do that first I've got a reasonable hole of it in the 774 jaw good enough to machine three mil of it. Well once for clearance on these chuck jaws, there's plenty. It's gonna be nosy because I'm gonna run the vacuum cleaner.
try a bit of WD-40 on it, so we've had just to it. I know that it is resistant to oil, it shouldn't, shouldn't do any harm. machine quite nicely. My brush is going through there very nicely indeed. It's cutting a lovely square key away which is what it's supposed to do. <laughs> this is another I wish job. Wish I'd never seen this bastard thing as well. <laughs> as well. <laughs> but no doubt we'll get there. I wish I wish I'd never seen the bastard. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got. Bad. Not bad at all. Quite a nice key way. If you haven't got a face plate or a catch plate or the tape has badly damage on your headstock, you can just use a, a three jaw chuck, any chuck. This is a self centered four jaw chuck. Just machine a 60 degree center on it. Something soft, it doesn't need to be anything, anything spectacular. This machine so it's running nice and true. That's all it needs. And it means when you put this in between centers, it'll be running true. And you can just run the driving dog off one of the jaws on the chuck, it'll do the job. Right, so we are now. Right, one eighty five thou off it. Is it twenty five? Which is like fifty. How far out that chuck's running, the fuel machine is sent in it and leave it in there, the center will be running through. Right, 30 so. Yeah, I'll take one more cut on the same setting. Just to polish it. Check it with a clamp. 
The clamp says three inches, so three inches it must be. I think I'm going to be cleaning the layers up before I do very much more. It's absolutely horrible, this stuff. The shamp for both sides. I bought to get them both the same, that looks pretty good. Right, now we'll put some teeth on that. Not forgetting to tighten the drive dog up and we should have a, a nice fire back here. Having a fire back here is not a bad idea because if you do something wrong and the gear train gets a shot or gets locked up, it'll just strip the teeth off this gear. I may well keep this one and give the lad the, the steel one I've made, not sure. Right, we're all set up again. This time, we're using the tough null blank. It's cutting much, more cheese on this steel, as you imagine. Cutting very nicely indeed. I'm cutting the full depth this time. 154th hour, I think it was the, the full depth for the for the gear or for the tooth. Okay, we're now down to the last tooth. So hopefully this is going to be right smack bang in the middle of that lot. And from where I'm standing it looks absolutely perfect. I'll be able to use that smaller, I'll be able to use the gear blank I made a mess of. Uh, turn it down size and make a different gear out of it. I think a 32 could be quite a handy gear to have. Right, so basically now, That looks good. I'll take it out, have a close look, mount it on my lathe, make sure it works, and then it's good to go. Need some of the bolts off and I forgot to tighten. That gear looks good. All the teeth are the same shape, same size. They've all fitted in perfectly. Mesh is excellent. Nothing the matter with that. Right, I've got the gear installed, that's the Fairbag gear there, the 40 tooth one. So at the minute I've got a 50, driving a 63, which I also made, connected to a 50, driving a 120. So that gear there, that's a transition gear, that's the ratio that converts the lathe to cut imperial threads. It meshes nice, it's a lot quieter with the Fairbag gear in. I'll fire the lathe up and override the, the, the switch on the door just to show you it running. Right, that's the lathe running in slow, and that's the gear train working perfectly. Very happy with that. 
see that gear is quieter than the steel gear so I'm going to keep that one as I said it's a good idea to have a, a favour gear in the train because if you do have an accident and you crash the lathe it'll actually strip that gear before it does any major damage so we did eventually get there uh, tough and all machines quite nicely but it is dirty messy stuff very happy